Buy stickers, buy stickers, my favorite person exclaimed excitedly. Once we settle into the new apartment, I plan to write love messages for you and paste them all over the house. Imagine seeing reminders of my love for you on the mirror while you relax in the bathtub. Isn't that lovely? I replied, a bit puzzled. Why do we need those messages when we already know how much we love each other? My loved one sighed and explained, well, you see, my parents helped us buy this apartment. Since our wedding, we've been struggling to get back on our feet and it was impossible for us to afford it on our own. My father made a determined decision to assist us. So Sveta, from being just a beloved girl, transformed into a bride. Of course, I wanted to marry you, but now we are one step closer to fulfilling our dreams. I'm just a carefree girl, often unaware of the efforts and sacrifices required to not only acquire a bed and those coveted stickers, but also furnish our cozy nest. At the moment, we only have money for the essentials. It's been a month since we moved in, and we even bought a new closet. Continuing our conversation, I shared my plan to visit my parents' house in the suburbs on the upcoming Saturday. However, Svetka decided to stay home since she had her friend's birthday celebrations to attend. Since the gift was already purchased, she didn't have any other errands to run. In the morning, I left, leaving a note on a pink post-it attached to the bathroom mirror. The note read, don't drink too much, love you. Throughout the day, we stayed in touch and Svetka even sent me a picture of the outfit she planned to wear to the party. As midnight approached, a series of drunken text messages and voicemails came pouring in, including one from my fiancé saying she was heading home. But then her phone suddenly went out of range. I woke up the next morning, intending to stay at my parents' house for the night, only to find out that I had to drive back home. Before I left, my mother, seeing me off at the train station, urged me not to be angry with Svetka, saying she was young and could make mistakes. She speculated that maybe Svetka had lost her phone since it was dead. I hugged my mother, feeling a mix of emotions, and hurried back home. Quietly unlocking the door with my key, I entered the apartment. The place was eerily silent. I peeked into the bedroom only to find my fiancé snoring and fast asleep. The lingering smell of alcohol indicated that she and her friends had quite the night last night. Closing the door behind me, I made my way to the kitchen. I turned on the kettle, cooked some eggs, and poured myself a beer. As I picked at my plate, I noticed some pink notes on the table, accompanied by a pen and a teacup that had already gone cold. Curiosity peaked, I decided to address these notes before diving into my breakfast. I vaguely remembered Svita mentioning a love letter. I hurriedly made my way to the bathroom, only to find what I had left there yesterday morning. I'm not sure why, but I felt a pang of disappointment. I tore the note off the mirror and tossed it into the trash. However, the most significant message of my life was waiting for me as I pulled up a chair. A pink note written in someone else's handwriting, read, sorry man, I didn't know. Stupor quickly transformed into rage. I stormed back into the kitchen, desperate to release my anger on anything within reach. It was a relieving moment when Svetka woke up and emerged in the hallway. I quickly approached her, handing her the note I had discovered under the toilet seat. I couldn't help but feel a mix of fear and frustration as her initial shock gave way to a momentary sense of relief. Was it even worth asking? I attempted to maintain my composure, but my efforts were ineffective. Sorry, we had too much to drink. I had too much to drink, Svetka mumbled, attempting to justify her actions. It's just that there were guys there, and the girls asked me not to mention that I wasn't single. You know, it was like a bet, but they wanted to find someone else. Did you really cheat just because a friend asked you to? I questioned, struggling to understand her reasoning. It's not like I didn't want it, the alcohol. I don't even remember if it meant anything or not. The last thing I recall, I mentioned that I lived alone and gave him my address. He called a cab and said he would walk me out, she confessed. But apparently, it led to more than just walking, 
I summarized my disappointment becoming increasingly apparent. We exchanged a few more words, and it became clear that Svetka failed to grasp the gravity of her mistake. She continuously professed her love for me, but what kind of love could exist in such circumstances? I made the decision to ask her to leave and live with her friends, since she willingly jeopardized our family at their request. Svetka, of course, called to apologize, but I had no choice but to block her. The most surprising turn of events occurred one Friday night when one of her friends called amidst a chaotic buzz and persuaded me to forgive Svetka. It became evident that with such a toxic circle of friends, our relationship was destined to fail from the start. Svetka desired both a family and the freedom to party with her friends at bars. However, I could only find solace in the realization that I avoided marrying a potential alcoholic and having to constantly question the integrity of our relationship. Dear friends, thank you for listening to our stories. Subscribe to the channel, put likes and leave your opinion in the comments. Don't forget to press the bell not to miss new stories, which we try to publish every day. We also remind you that everyone can share unique stories from their life or the lives of friends, which can be sent to us by email, which is specified in the description of the video. Good luck to everyone and be happy.